we are going to be talking about conjugating verbs. Like I mentioned, this is probably the single most important concept to know in the Spanish language. Does anybody know what conjugating verbs is? What we do when we conjugate a verb? Isn't that like when you conjugate them by like putting them with a verb that sounds like it goes with it, you know? Right, track. Conjugating verbs, what it is, is a verb is what part of speech? What kind of word is a verb? It's an action word. Okay, it can also be a linking verb as well. An action is something that somebody or something does, in which case the object that is performing or doing the verb is the subject. So conjugating a verb is when you match, when you change the uh, um, verb to match the subject. or the item that is actually performing the verb. That's what we do when we conjugate. We went over the verb ser before, to be. Yo soy, tu eres, el es, nosotros somos, ellos son. Okay, that is conjugating a verb. Now, that was a, what's called an irregular verb. It's a verb that doesn't really follow any sort of pattern. Uh, but normally when we conjugate verbs, there's a pattern that we will follow. Now, we do kind of conjugate verbs in English. For example, if I were to use the word study, I said, I study, he studies. Notice both of those words were kind of different. One was S-T-U-D-Y, the other was S-T-U-D-I-E-S. -E different spelling, but it means the same thing. That's kind of what we're doing when we conjugate. But in Spanish, it's a lot more prevalent. It's more, it's, it's more noticeable. And we're going to use our practice verb right here is estudiar. Okay, what does it mean? To study. Now this verb right here is not conjugated. So it's called the infinitive. So an infinitive is a non-conjugated verb. All right? So I'll put it right here. Infinitive. How is that infinitive? Because the way I look at it is you kind of see the word infinite in there. And there's not a specific subject that's talking about, so it can be used in an infinite amount of situations. You know, I'm not specifically saying I'm studying or you're studying. I'm just saying to study. For example, like I want to study. He wants to study. There's no specific subject affecting that word uh, in the language here. So we have to say now. Verbs have two parts to them. They have what's called the stem, and then they have what's called the ending. All verbs end in either AR, ER, or IR. Those are the endings. So in this case, what kind of verb is this? It's an AR verb. It ends in AR, which means everything else is called the stem. Okay. Now, has anybody in here ever seen a flower? A couple of you. All right. Now, there's a certain kind of flower called a rose, if you're familiar with that, right? How many colors of roses are there? Seven. There's seven. Okay, there's, uh, I might be more, maybe there are only seven. So we have red roses, pink, pink ones, peach. white ones, peach, peach fuchsia, polka dotted, salmon. Salmon. salmon, striped, That's plaid, it. all so sorts of roses. All right, anyway, let's say I have a red rose in my hand, which I don't, I have a green marker, and I have a plaid rose in my hand, okay, and I take all the petals off. What's left? The steps. the steps. Do they look similar? Yes. yes. They do. Okay? Because you take off the, the different colored petals, you still have what's a stem and it looks similar. In Spanish, the stem of, of a verb, when you conjugate it, actually stays the same. It's the ending of the verb that will change when you conjugate. So in which case, if you have a red rose, a pink rose, and a white rose, those are th the stems look the same, but the, the end part of the flower is what's different. That's how you think, if you think of conjugating verbs that way, helps visualize it a little more. So we have our um, conjugation chart here that we've seen, that we've used. Again, we've got to cross out both of those because it only use that to stay. All right, now, again, what was the stem of the verb? And this verb, estudiar. Estudi, right? What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it in each box to show you that the stem won't change. It stays the same.
Now, in each of these boxes, do we remember what, uh, what they represent? Which pronouns? Each of these represents a different subject or a different pronoun. Do we remember what they represent? That first one, this top left one, what, what form is that? That's the yo. the yo form. What does yo mean? Yo. I. Right. And we have the second one. Which one's this? Do. What does that mean? You. you. Then down here, what do we got? Okay, I think I heard el, oh. ella, usted. Okay, what does el mean? He, he. El, okay. Ella. She. Usted. You. you, but formal, right. It's the same as this, but formal. Then up here, top right, what do we got? Nos. Nosotros. Yes. Nosotros, which is? We. we. Oh. And then down here we've got? Ellos, ellas, ustedes. Ellos is? They. Ellas is? They, but girls. Ustedes? It's you all. Notice usted is you. Ustedes is plural, so it means you, plural. Okay, remember how we set it up. First person, second person, third person, singular, plural. Granted, the usted ustedes is the second person, but it falls under that third person category. Now, we're going to talk about the endings here. We notice when you conjugate a verb, the first thing you do is drop the ending. You're going to add a new ending depending on the subject. So, if it's the I form, the yo form, and I was to say, I study, what you do is with regular AR verbs, these are regular ones, and they're only for AR verbs, well, all of these endings, you would add an O. So, yo estudio means I study. If I wanted to say you study, okay, I would drop the AR and I would add AS. Estudias. Yo estudio, tu estudias. Because the yo form ends in a no. It's the way it is. You might be thinking of gender, maybe, like masculine, feminine. That's only for, for uh, adjectives and nouns. Nouns have gender. Adjectives match the gender. Verbs don't. Verbs have subjects, different uh, points of view. All right. Then we have L.A. usted. If you wanted to say he or she studies or you study formal, what you do is you would drop the AR and you add A. And that's another reason why. This one is you add an A. So it would be yo estudio, tu estudias, el estudia, or ella estudia, or usted estudia. Now with nosotros, we would be saying we study. You usually, you'll drop the AR of the verb and you add A-M-O-S. Amos. So it becomes nosotros estudiamos. Okay? Yo estudio, tu estudias, él estudia, ella estudia, usted estudia, nosotros estudiamos. And finally, with ellos es ustedes, that means they or you all. So they study or you all study. And what you would do is you take the verb, drop the AR, and you add an N. Ellos es estudian. Ustedes estudian. Now I'm going to make another little chart right here next to it, just with the endings. Because here you see the verb estudiar being conjugated. But the most important part of this is, that, is to understand what the endings are. So in the O form, usually we'll drop the AR of whatever verb it is and add an O. In the two form, you drop an AR and add it AS, A-S. In the LAU set form, you drop the AR and add A. In the nosotros form, you drop the AR and add AMOS. And in the AOC ustedes form, drop the AR and add AN. When I was learning Spanish, when I learned how to conjugate, I would just repeat in my mind, O, AS, A, AMOS, AN. 
Go over and over again to remember because if I, I visualize this and go oh asa almost on, I knew what they were. Students tend to get these two mixed up a lot because this ends as, so you think plural, so it must be this one, but it's not. Okay, so oh asa almost on. Make sure that now again all ar verbs. If it's hablar, h a b l a r, drop the ar. Hablo, hablas, habla, hablamos, hablan. Any questions on conjugating? Is it clear?